Hello, Avorians. How is everybody? How are our ghouls doing out there? Today is Halloween in the U.S. We get a quick double check, if I may. Switch over the screen share to <clears throat> a risk disclosure. So welcome, everyone. Today is Saturday, the 31st. Um, I am Steve Vettel. Welcome to new subscribers. Do keep in mind for those out there, variable version 5 is out. If you're having any, any issues with it, reboot your VPS. So um, lots of fun stuff today. So, <clears throat> And for a few of the questions I got in the Q&A, if uh, you guys have never seen the original movie Halloween, which is what that is based upon, it is a fantastic flick. Michael Myers, actually, that is who I am going as tonight in our big block party, <clears throat> our super spreader event. So risk disclosure, trade in the foreign exchange markets carries high risk and may not be suitable for all investors trading on margin and utilizing leverage can carry an even higher level of risk. It can lead to a complete loss of investment funds. So before deciding to trade the foreign exchange market, even on a scary night like tonight, or using any of our software or alert products, you should carefully and diligently consider your personal and investment objectives, level of experience or risk tolerance. More importantly, can you afford to lose the money? Bottom line. All right, so let's switch over to slide two. So Voria um, has a whole bunch of different software out there. Um, and actually, maybe one of these days I'll update the screen. Uh, but we do not have company recommended settings, guys. So just make sure the settings are coming from the developers. In some cases, they'll come from me when I have a little better experience with some of that software. Uh, we don't have any recommended settings. We're not a financial advisory firm. We have nothing to do with your brokerage account. We don't trade it. We can't see inside it. We have no access to it. There are lots of good Forex brokers out there. There are lots of junky ones as well. So make sure that you are doing a deep dive in your up and down line to find out who they are and which ones are the best. So we do not license software. Um, we base our, uh, we license software. Users can use however they want at their own risk and discretion. Much of the software comes out of the box with the fault settings that can be adjusted, which is really the purpose of watching the uh, developers. And Hassan has this call before mine. So once that's uh, up and loaded, I'm going to take a look at it myself. Hassan on Variables Telegram channel and me will be putting out um, the suggestions on what's going on for next week not this week because nobody i know in their right mind is trading this week with a live account don't care how good you are or how good your trading is i would stay away from it this week and as i have cast that from most mountaintops as loud as i possibly can i don't care if i'm wrong so it's all about just um you know saving some money right protecting capital. So everybody asks, what do your operations look like, Steve? So there's me ugly face. Those are all my systems. And this is the slide that I will be posting on my Telegram channel. So just extreme volatility. Um, expect it. It may not happen, right? Uh, but I'm going to show you one piece that actually came out from Goldman Sachs um, that actually addressed that more in the uh, extremeness of the VIX index, which measures volatility. Um, it just shorts taking on larger positions. But a penny saved, as I always joke, is a penny earned. So uh, do me a favor. <clears throat> Looks like I'm getting some feedback in my uh, systems here. Can you guys hear me and see my screen OK? Is everything coming across pretty solid? I'm going to switch over to the next screen. So let's take a quick look at the uh, Forex factory calendar. And that is right here. Okay, cool. So Forex factory calendar, um, I mean, does it really matter, guys? Honestly, I mean, yeah, there's a ton of stuff going on next week in almost every currency, right? Australia, Canada, the U.S., Great Britain, central bankers speaking all next week, press conferences from the FOMC, right? I mean, it's, it's basically a bananas week of red folder, high volatility events in addition to the election. So this will be up on the notes in the back office. I'm not really sure it matters uh, if you're trading next week in live accounts, guys. God love you. So let's move into the charts. 
Uh, occasionally, I show the screen. I always recommend taking a look at this. This is nothing more than finviz.com. Just click on the Forex. Make sure everything is set on a daily time frame. This allows you to look at a single screen and what you're really looking for as you're going across. And a lot of these can and cannot have any correlations with each other. But I always start off with just looking generally as to uh, what's set up. So if we look into, and I'm not going to go into a lot of technical analysis this week, but I mean, the dollar has rallied and that has pushed down all dot with the exception of the, uh, I mean, to a lesser degree, the yen, but it's pushed down all the dollar denominated pairs out there, um, <clears throat> mostly the euro, which is hovering right at a support point. We're down near the bottom of that channel that I've been showing a lot over the last couple of weeks. Um, that's in the trading view system out there. If anybody wants me to do a deeper dive on these currencies, you know, just let me know. I'm just sort of glazing over this weekend because quite frankly, if you're in the U.S., you, you have kids, so you've got more important things to do this week, uh, this weekend on tonight as far as Halloween than messing around with this stuff. And honestly, most of these charts are probably going to look dramatically different by the end of next week. So the only, the, my only advice to everybody, because I always get the, well, I'm in drawdown on some older Einstein stuff. You know, what do I do? Um, I have very detailed notes on my Telegram channel. I know you're going to have to scroll back a bunch, uh, but I have very detailed notes as to what to do if you're on an Alexander or Einstein drawdown of some live trades that are still out there <clears throat> taking away. You know, and who knows? In, in some of those cases, you know, the volatility that could ensue um, could wind up completely getting you out of all of those trades, right? It could also go the wrong way and blow out the account. So you have to keep that in mind. And you know, I'm not going to go into that in detail today. But I promise you, if you poke through my Telegram channel, you'll see there are very specific notes that uh, myself and some of the other <clears throat> team leaders uh, around the world have sort of put together as a general guidelines of what to do. And, you know, keep in mind, we have the, um, the high volatility settings on our Einstein and Alexander accounts, which uh, in most cases are going to be the live ones all turned off. Uh, if they're not already, most of them, mine are all off. So a um, couple of them are in some drawdown. We're going to be managing out uh, of some of the other accounts I follow, but I think we'll, <clears throat> we'll be pretty good, I think, with the high volatility settings, even with the stuff that's out there uh, running live uh, with new trades turned off. Uh, is, and you can just hit the auto trading off button at the top of your MT4 platform will turn everything off. So, um, but put the questions in the Q&A window if you could, please. And um, I'll take a, a look. <clears throat> Um, as if the, the problem with the, <clears throat> i tell you what, let me do this. Let me log in here. I didn't log in purposely to, um, actually, let me log into this first. Get some deeper dive questions here. There we go. So I'm going to bring into view and hopefully everybody can see my screen just to make sure. Here we go. Can you guys see the trading view screen now? All right, cool. <clears throat> All right, so we always start off with the S&P. Notice we're still holding, okay? So everybody that's running for the hills, it's technically the damage is still, you know, it's pretty good over the last week, but we're still holding this level. <clears throat> Let's go to the DXY. This is the dollar. Okay. Now I have uh, Desan's what's called squeeze zones indicator on this chart. If you're not sure what that is, you can just go into indicators, type in squeeze zones and overlay it on your chart. Okay. It's actually pretty decent. Just draws a lot of support and resistance points. I've added my own. So the black and green lines are my own stuff, which is a broader uh, support. We're right up against it right now. It doesn't say, it doesn't mean we couldn't tick above this. So the, the, the feeling on the street right now, as far as everybody poking around <clears throat> trying to see what's going on with all our others. Um, but you know, <clears throat> I run with about six or seven guys that are either 
currently trading for funds uh, or ex hedge fund guys are running their own strategy operations. And the, the consensus is if the current administration continues to hold um, the executive branch of government here in the U.S., um, we should see a rally in the dollar. And if the opposition wins the administration, we should see a decline in the dollar. Now, does that mean that's going to come to fruition right after the election? If it's contested, the market's just going to be going bananas. And I don't know that there's any pattern that's going to emerge from that other than chaos. Okay, so outside of the chaos scenario, that's why I'm really not trading anything. Um, you know, again, you know, you always want to look to see where you can be wrong on this stuff, but pontificating, um, is not my strong suit reacting or being prepared in advance, um, with the lower risk type of strategies is always the best strategy, right? <clears throat> it's famously said a penny saved <clears throat> keeps your powder dry. All right. So, um, let's take a look at GBP USD. Now this is sold off um, daily chart. Yes, this is sold off. Uh, but we're still holding the area. You know, could it break down to the 200? It's certainly possible, right? Um, so ideally, <clears throat> the reason why I've tried to stay away from any advice related to trading this is I don't want anybody to say, well, you know, we've got a good idea of what's going on. Steve's telling us this. Let's just go ahead and trade next week. So I, I've tried to remain. Um, you know, omniscient on kind of what my thoughts are on this, but, you know, we certainly could break on any of these charts one way or the other, right? I have no way to protect you guys from that. So the smartest move is just to sit on the sidelines. By the way, if you're raising your hand, um, just lower your hand, if you could, please, and put your questions in the Q&A window. That'd be great. <clears throat> I can't see trading view. All right, let's start again. Looks like we're getting some freezeness here. All right, how about that? Do you guys see it now? <clears throat> cool. All right, let's back up here. So you guys get me into the rhythm. I'm in the zone. You guys couldn't see it. <laughs> so here's the S&P. You know, we're holding, holding support right here. Dollar. Okay, see so yeah, we're up against this point, right? Good break higher. The current administration holds a house. That's the feeling on the street. Doesn't mean we're right, right? Let's take a look at GBP USD. See how we're holding support. Still tucking a tight range. This could break and put in some of these candles that you're seeing back in the spring when COVID first broke. It could certainly put in a few days the candles that look like this. There's no trading system, in my opinion, that's going to be able to work through this unless you just happen to get short. And in this particular case, just ride the dog down. It could certainly happen. You know, one of the great things about variables, fantastic returns, is it caught some of this stuff um, on both ways. And it had, you know, just an absolutely outstanding month in March, right? <clears throat> but if you extract that from the returns, um, I don't even pay attention to that stuff. What if it didn't catch the best part about it, you know, and it was just sitting on the sidelines? Yeah, you've missed the opportunity, but. Um, you know, <clears throat> cooler trades prevail, so to speak. <clears throat> so for the U.S. dollar, okay, again, since I'm getting some questions on this, let's just go back to the dollar here. <clears throat> Trying to keep this in the window here, but make this just a little bit bigger. There, there you go. So if the current administration wins re-election, it's to stay in the White House. The consensus is we're going to see a rally in the dollar. It could be a short-lived relief rally, but certainly it could be a real magnet if we were going to see a protracted move um, up to the 96 area. It's entirely possible. Okay. <clears throat> um, that would be a big move. I would not want to be short the dollar. Okay. Just like if that was in fact the case, there's no way <clears throat> that I would want to be long this because we're going to break, um, which is arguably a fairly strong neckline on the U.S. or the Euro U.S. dollar here at the uh, the 1650 area. Just right in this hole <clears throat> from 1600 to like 16 is like 1640 ish. 
you know, we break below this, we're probably going to sail to this area right here. Okay. Would not want to be long this market. Just know that, right? Again, I could be wrong. Just giving you potential moves out of this. Um, but I always hesitate to get even deeper on that kind of analysis because I know there's some people out there going to just go out and trade this and be like, all right, I did great. Or Steve's the worst analyst ever because he told me he was going to do this. And I'm, what I'm telling you to do is sit on the sidelines. So, all right, so let's take a look at the Euro JPY, my most hated currency <clears throat> because it's tough to call what's going on. But we're sitting at a precipice on this, right? 200 days right down here. This is the green line. Uh, we're sitting right on uh, support. We poked through it. You notice it popped right back above it. So there's some support, at least from a day perspective, uh, or in a single day, uh, gave us basically a doji candle. Can't really read much into this. Uh, but I can tell you, if we break through these areas, this is going to sail down to 118. It could be pretty quick. So... Let me just go through some of these questions and delete what I have answered. So if you go into trading, as I'm getting a bunch of questions on this indicator, type in right where you see my cursor, type in squeeze zone, it'll pull up. Empirical FX is Dasan. Okay, that's his screen name and trading view. And they just overlay it on your charts. Cool. What's the next question? Yeah, the, the problem with this is that if it's a contested election, guys, um, we could see this really drag out. Uh, through the whole week. I don't know. I have no idea, right? <clears throat> now, let's let's hope for once the, the election commissions in this country or in these damn states will do their job. Um, it would be great. <clears throat> but if in fact I continue to see the volatility, I won't be trading the following week either. It's that simple. Again, always could be wrong. There's nothing wrong with sitting on the bench, you know? <clears throat> Unless you didn't do well in baseball practice the previous week. There's really nothing from an investment standpoint wrong with sitting on the bench. It really isn't. So let's take a look here. Other questions. All right. So there's one other thing I want to show you guys. And let me just uh, let's merge this into the current browser. All right. Um, for those of you that follow me on Twitter, and this time I will make sure I am sharing the right screen. Okay. It should be good. So for you equity folk out there, for those that just like to look at macro charts and be confused, <laughs> for that, I apologize. This is actually a really good one. So typically when Goldman Sachs Prime Desk puts something out, um, it's usually pretty important stuff. Um, and this essentially is just the largest increase in U.S. ETF shorts since early April. So it suggests elevated portfolio hedges into U.S. election. A hedge is just nothing more than uh, portfolio managers in any respect, you know, whether they're trading for mutual funds, family offices, hedge funds, whatever, um, are putting a lot of protection in place. Um, and this corresponds very closely with what's going on in the VIX. So both implied and low volatility um, funds that correlate um, exceptionally well, either long or short with the market, um, we're at a high right now. So there's a lot of ETFs out there, you know, like SQ and some of the other ones that are short-based. <clears throat> a lot of the Direxion funds um, that are short-based as well are used very heavily in hedging uh, just because of the wicked liquid and they trade hundreds of millions of shares a day. Um, right now it's at the highest. So what this tells me um, is that uh, the short markets are coiling, okay? So if volatility picks up in equities, and, you know, obviously, as you guys may know, um, just following some of Jeffrey Gunlack's comments last week, he's the bond king, uh, runs a big hedge fund out, in, out of L.A. called Double Line Capital, probably one of the more respected guys on the planet. Um, he basically has talked about the 200 basis points lift in the 30-year treasury, and um, that's been, that could just set markets ablaze. If we see that kind of volatility in credit and equity markets, we certainly will see it in Forex. 
So I'll post this chart because I've had some interest in it. I'll post it on the Telegram channel. Don't read too much into it, but you know, I'm always trying to keep everybody uh, out of harm's way, regardless of what asset you guys are trading. Any other questions on anything? Because I'm gonna pro we got a bunch of stuff to do in the federal house to prepare for our ghoulish evening of craziness. So if anybody's got any questions, let me just type this in because I know sometimes people don't have. <clears throat> Um, why am I, here we go, I can't type today, <clears throat> there you go, sveteral at avoriaprime.com, <clears throat> so we're asking questions about JPY. I don't like this currency pair, okay? So just know this is why I don't talk about it too much. <clears throat> so here is Euro's USD JPY. This thing is on the precipice, but it is still, let me just shrink this down, move this up. So yeah, we're trading down in the trend channel. Let me just make sure we're sharing this screen here. There we go. <clears throat> so this is the USD JPY. <clears throat> There really is no deal, okay? We're trending down on a currency that is, is shown um, uh, <clears throat> just a, a, a move down. You know, it's certainly possible that we could see the 103 uh, area, but, you know, if we see strength in the U.S. dollar, this thing could just rip right back up to uh, the 106, which is the top, or uh, like a 106.20 area, which is the top essentially of the trend channel down. That would be the target that I'm looking for right in this 106 zone would what I'd be looking to see it hit. <clears throat> yeah, you're asking a lot of questions and stuff that I don't know the answers to because I haven't seen that. Um, if you're not happy with what's going on with Einstein, you want something that's a little easier to trade, um, you might want to add an additional license and set a variable. Okay. <clears throat> Chances of the U.S. JPY bouncing off that support and going up are going to be 100% predicated upon what the U.S. dollar does, obviously, right? So <clears throat> this is a better chart to look to see what potentially could happen to this. Start here with your analysis and then move into this next. Does that make sense? <clears throat> What other questions? We got a bunch of questions here. Um, yes, uh, I'll post this. You can see the screen here. Let me just post this. Yeah, I'll post this on my channel. Uh, yeah, let's take a look at that as well. Here is the 25K euro denominated Einstein account. It's on conservative high volatility settings, as many of you may know, which is essentially 0 0.01 lot size per 10K. Okay, so real small. <clears throat> this thing is not hitting it out of the park and it's not designed for that. It is designed to get moderate returns. Okay, this thing is averaged. Um, essentially looking at all of these months, things averaged about five or six percent um, a month. So maybe a little lower, maybe closer to five if you just look at all. It hasn't really been out that long, but we're still beginning to build a fairly significant track record. It doesn't take that many trades. It's in a bit of drawdown right now, uh, which we think we're going to keep live because um, this account's heavily monitored by <clears throat> um, a lot of us top traders. The um, so on average, you know, these are the stats, it's pulled back a little bit, but the, the point is that of showing something like this, uh, in a live account situation over a long period of time, um, is that the thing, because it's so picky, look how high the win rate is. This is actually really good guys. So, uh, this is the argument for diversification, right? You know, have an account with the high volatility settings running demo or live. 
um, and then have another account uh, or two or three other licenses, you know, essentially getting to a platinum is what all my team is working towards. All of us are going to have platinum licenses and we're going to be running four different pieces of software. You know, they may not all be running four live accounts. We'll have maybe a demo and three lives or two demos and two, you know, whatever you want to sort of dice it up. Um, I expect, and I'll be showing you guys all that stuff once we get it all in place. Um, ideally, I was maybe a little more picky um, and I wanted him way for because the Sun said he's going to be pushing out all kinds of updates to me. Um, I wanted him to get past everything before I load them on uh, into demos or live accounts. So, that, but that's my plan is to get all this stuff set up. <clears throat> but thanks for the team. To, I say big shout out to the team for all of the work they've done. Just a tremendous amount. I mean, if you guys could see how many of the 32 members of our advisory board, the AP advisory board, just put in hours and hours of posts, just tons of stuff that gets posted in here in these Telegram channels. I can't show you because there's a lot of private stuff here, but take my word for it. The collaboration, the amount of work effort and workload that has been put forth is tremendous. Y'all should be exceptionally proud uh, of this group. Um, and with that, <clears throat> um, do me a favor, Sif, can you send me um, just an email? Since you got a lot of questions here, I'll, I'll be able to answer them with a much longer uh, response in email. <clears throat> and uh, here, before we go, I'll, I'll answer at least the one question you have about the squeeze zones. So here's the, um, those are the settings for squeeze zone right here. See them? It's just the default stuff. It's what opens up, because uh, I asked Hassan about that, and he has these zones set up um, as just default stuff. That's what it looks like. Cool. <clears throat> All right, everybody. Happy Halloween. <clears throat> May the ghoulish trades be with y'all. And have a hell of a week. I think